Welcome to the session on the art of Middle Ages. Before thinking of the art of the Middle Ages, we have to understand the scope of the term the Middle Ages. Though the labels used for historical periods offer a convenient method of study, sometimes they are misleading as they become no longer suitable in the light of the latest studies in the field. Those who coined the word the Middle Ages thought of the entire thousand years from 5th to 15th century as an age of darkness, an empty interval between classical antiquity and its rebirth, the Renaissance. But further studies in this area has proved this notion wrong and since then we have been considering this period as a time of great cultural change and considerable creative activity. During the period of 200 years between the death of Justinian and the reign of Charles Main, the center of gravity of European civilization shifted to northward from the Mediterranean Sea and the economic, political and spiritual framework of the Middle Ages began to take shape. Now, let us see some of the important artistic achievements of these centuries. Celtic Germanic Style The Celtic Germanic style was a result of the widespread migrations after the fall of Roman Empire. The Celts who had settled the area in southwest Germany and eastern France during the second millennium BC spread across Europe and Asia Minor. Germanic people were the inhabitants of Baltic region. They were highs of a widespread artistic tradition known as animal style. The early examples of it can be traced in the Luristan bronze of Iran and the Scythian gold ornaments from the southern Russia. This style with its combination of abstract and original shapes of formal discipline and imaginative freedom merged with the intricate ornamental metal work of the cells to create Celtic Germanic art. A very good example of this heathen style can be seen in the gold and enamel purse cover from the grave at Sutton Hoo. Metal work in a variety of materials and techniques was the principal medium of animal style. They show an exquisitely refined craftsmanship. Hiberno Saxon style. The influence of Germanic version of animal style is also evident in the works of art made north of the Alps. This was produced by the Irish or Hibernians who assumed the spiritual and cultural leadership of Western Europe during the early Middle Ages. The Irish, who had never been part of the Roman Empire, readily accepted Christianity, but they did not become Rome-oriented. The Irish preferred monasticism, which took over the leadership of the church from the bishops. They established monasteries as cultural centers throughout the European countryside. These were seeds of learning and arts too. The artistic style evolved from heathen Celtic Germanic art and flourished in the monasteries founded by the Irish in Saxon England is known as Hiberno-Saxon style. The manuscripts produced in this style shows great effort of decorative embellishments. Irish manuscript reach a climax in the Book of Kells, the most varied and elaborate codex of Celtic art. It was done at the monastery on the island of Lona and left incomplete when the island was invaded by Vikings between 804 and 807. It is surprising to note the presence of images from the natural world hidden in the profuse ornamentation. There are only four symbols of evangelists written from the early Christian manuscripts in this book. These are man by St. Matthew, lion by St. Mark, eagle by St. John and ox by St. Luke. Celtic and Germanic artists show little interest in the human figure for a long time. Carolingian Art Carolingian dynasty was founded by King Charles Mann father and lasted from 751 to 987. Charles Mann built an empire that didn't outlast his death but the cultural revival the empire spawned proved more durable. Monasteries become as small cities where manuscripts were mass produced. 
goldsmithing and the use of precious and semi-precious stones were in vogue. The cultural reforms initiated by Charles Mann include collecting and copying of ancient Roman literature. He appointed an array of scholars to restore ancient Roman learning and to establish a system of schools at every cathedral and monastery. Carolingian revival can be termed the first and most important phase of the fusion of the Celtic Germanic flavor with that of Mediterranean world. The most important achievement of Charles Mann Renaissance was monumental architecture. Like successful emperors in the past, Charles Mann undertook an ambitious building program. Although Roman building practices had not been completely lost during the Middle Ages, masonry vaulting on a grand scale had disappeared. Several monasteries and churches were built under him, but few survived. The best known surviving building is his palatine, that is palace, chapel at Aachen, which supposedly was inspired by San Vitale in Ravenna. However, the similarities between the two ends in the fact that both are domed radially planned structure. The exterior wall of the palatine is 16-sided, but its interior, like San Vitale's, is octagonal. It is neither Byzantine nor Roman, but Germany, the first monument of an incipient Western architecture. Outside of Germany, the vast majority of early medieval churches were small in size, simple in plan and provincial in style. The best example is Star Maria di Naranco in Spain. It is like Charles Mann's palace chapel, an audience hall and chapel, but on a much more modest scale. What we understand from the literary sources is that Carolingian churches contain murals, mosaics and relief sculptures but these have disappeared almost entirely. On the other hand, illuminated manuscripts, carved ivories and goldsmith's work have survived in considerable numbers. By and large, these were modelled on early Christian and Byzantine examples and probably executed by artists imported from Constantinople, Ravenna or Rome. The former imperial treasury in Vienna which is said to have been found in the tomb of Charles Mann. The picture of St. Matthew from that manuscript shows a close affinity with the classical portraits from Pompey. More typical is a slightly later miniature of St. Mark painted for the Gospel book of Archbishop Ebo of Rhymes that shows the classical model translated into a Carolingian idiom. In H. W. Jansen's words, the dynamism of line that distinguishes our miniature from its predecessor recalls the passionate movement in the ornamentation of Irish manuscripts. An even more energetic form of the Ebu Gospel style can be seen in the Ertrichet Sala. The entire book is illustrated with pen drawings. Here, again the artist has followed a much older model. The rhythmic quality of draftsmanship gives to these sketches a kind of emotional coherence that could not have been present in the earlier pictures. The style of the rhyme school can be seen continuing in the reliefs of the jewel front car of the Lindo Gospels, a work of third quarter of the 19th century. Ottonian Art in Germany, after the death of Lars Carolingian king in 911, the centre of political power shifted north to Saxony. Otto I, the central government established by the Saxon kings, also revived the imperial ambitions of Charles Mann. During the Ottonian period, from the mid 10th century to the beginning of the 11th, Germany became the leading nation of Europe artistically as well as politically. The Giro Crucifix, a wooden sculpture in the cathedral at Cologne, bears the marks of artistry of this period. This pristine iconography shows a number of features which were new to the Western art, monumental in scale, carved in powerfully rounded forms and filled with a deep concern for the suffering of the Lord. Here, a strong influence of Byzantine art is evident. Ottonian artists translated the Byzantine image into large-scale sculptural terms and replaced its gentle pathos with an expressive realism. 
you can compare the sculpture with image in the front cover of Lindo Gospel that we have mentioned earlier so that we will get a clear idea of what is being discussed here. An excellent example of architecture from this period is St. Michael's Church at Hildesium. The bronze doors of Bishop Bernard in this cathedral deserve a special attention. These richly sculptured bronze doors were commissioned by Bishop Bernard in 2015. They are divided into broad horizontal fields and each field contains a biblical scene in high relief. The composition must have been derived from illuminated manuscripts since very similar scenes are found in medieval Bibles. The Ottonian manuscripts also show the same intensity of glance and gesture found in the Bernardian doors. Its finest achievement is the Gospel Book of Otto III. It contains notable echoes of ancient paintings transmitted through Byzantine art. However, these elements have been reformulated by the Ottonian artist. At this point, we have to turn our attention to another artistic style existed along with the Carolingian and Ottonian art which became prevalent in the later years. This is known as Romanesque art. Romanesque and Gothic art. Arsis D. Komen, who died in 1873, was the first writer to apply the term Romance or Romanesque to the art which obtained in the west of Europe after Charlemagne. The term points on the one hand to the affinities of this art with that of Rome and on the other to its intermediate position as between a national style and one of foreign origin. But in fact, it consists of a large variety of regional styles along with traditions such as late classical, early Christian, Byzantine, Islamic and Celtic Germanic. What welded all these different components into a coherent style during the second half of the 11th century were a variety of socio-political factors. In many respects, Western Europe between 1050 and 1200 showed more of its Roman affinity than it had been since the 6th century. The art which succeeded Romanesque is known as Gothic. The term is said to have been first used by the famous painter Raphael in a report he addressed to Leo X. The expression Gothic was used at the period as a synonym of barbarous as opposed to Roman. The use of the epithet Gothic was popularized by the historian of Italian art Vasari and still persists. If we examine a Romanist church and a Gothic church, we easily recognize the essential differences of the two styles. In spite of the towers that dominated, Romanist churches are still somewhat heavy and depressed. But the impression conveyed by the Gothic church are those of height and lightness. In the former, the solid surfaces are in excess of the apertures. The latter is made up of widows, rose windows, pinnacles and lace-like traceries of stones. While the decoration of the Romanist church is conventional, fantastic or geometrical, that of Gothic is based directly upon nature. Round-headed arches and horizontal lines characterize the former in the later the most striking feature are its vertical lines and its pointed arches. To sum up, the idea behind a Romanesque church is of serene majesty and conscious strength and that of Gothic is of the lifting up of soul to God. The mixture of Northern, Asiatic, Syrian and Byzantine elements is apparent though difficult to analyze in the evolution which gave birth successively to Romanesque and Gothic art. Later, the greco roman element became fainter and fainter till it almost disappeared in Gothic architecture. Now, let us briefly point out the principal phases of this transformation. Tracing the evolution of the Romanist church back to its source, we shall find that, like the Gothic church, it owed its origin to the Roman basilica of the 4th century. Romanist church differs in many particulars from the basilica. It was built in the form of Latin cross, the roof was vaulted, the windows generally round-headed. Finally, it had as a rule one or more towers forming a corporate part of the building. However, these modifications and several others were not at once adopted, 
we can trace their evolution down to the middle of the 12th century and even later. But the general idea was the same, a central nave lighted laterally ending in an apse and side aceless generally two in number. To support the weight of their walls, Romanist architects were obliged to increase the thickness of their walls and pillars. The oldest and finest Romanist churches in France are found south of the Loire. The great churches built at Spice, Mainz and Worms are among the masterpieces of religious architecture. In Italy, the principal monument of Romanesque art is the Cathedral of Pisa. In England, the architecture of Saxons gave place to the Romanesque imported by the Norman conquerors. The earliest English examples are therefore closely akin to French Norman buildings. But soon, the English developed a very distinctive style of their own, heavier and more massive than that of its prototypes in Normandy. The Ram Cathedral is a typical example of this naturalized Romanesque. While the Romanesque church contains within themselves the principle of their stability, the Gothic church owes its safety to external abutments. It is almost certain that the first Gothic monuments were built in the Le de France and in Picardy. In Germany, Gothic art did not appear before 1209. The Gothic choir of the Abbey Church of St. Denis was begun in 1144, the Church of Noyon in 1140, Notre Dame in 1163, Bosches in 1172, Chartres in 1194, Reims in 1211, Amiens in 1215. From the north of the France, the Gothic type passed into Alassis, Staatsburg 1277, into Germany, Cologne 1248, into Italy, Spain, Portugal, Sweden, Bohemia and Hungary. In England, it assumed a national character, the main features of which were a great structural sobriety combined later with more richness and beauty in the ribbing of walls and in ornament generally. The important monuments in this style are Cathedral of Canterbury, the Choir of Lincoln, Westminster Abbey and Salisbury. The Gothic churches of the 15th century are both mannered and alarming in their over slenderness of their structure. Though cathedrals are its most perfect expression, Gothic style has also produced some of the beautiful town halls of Flemish cities. All the productions are magnificent abbeys, notably that of Mon, St. Michael and charming private houses such as the Hotel de Cluny in Paris and Jacques Coyer's house at Bosches. As a result of its construction, wall paintings, the special art of primitive Christianity was relatively neglected both in Romanesque and Gothic periods. But as the Gothic church had lofty windows, they had to be filled in and beautified with colored glasses. The art of glass painting is inseparable from Gothic art. While it was in its glory, the illumination of manuscripts was also practiced. But it was not until the middle of the 14th century that this art achieved any preeminent results. The decoration of Romanesque churches was often carried out by the monks who built them and that of Gothic churches was essentially the work of lay sculptures and stone carvers who formed themselves into guilds. In both cases, the favorite form of decoration was the bas relief. The Romanist sculptures ornamented the tympana of porches with large religious compositions and figures of men and animals on the capitals of columns and friezes. The Gothic sculptures introduced reliefs and statues in all parts of the vast buildings in the porches, the galleries and the choir stalls. It has been calculated that Chartres Cathedral contains no less than 10,000 figures, statues and reliefs, persons and animals painted on glass. Roman sculpture is the product of diverse influences which vary in intensity according to the country. For most, among them was the persistent influence of Roman art. 
what is lacking in this composite art is the presence of nature studied at first hand. Romanesque art is majestic, powerful and decorative, but it is always abstract, conventional and indifferent to reality. One of the most characteristic examples is the tympanum of the Cathedral of Oton representing the Last Judgment. In contrast to Romanesque art, the mature Gothic art of the 13th century appears as a brilliant revival of realism. The Gothic sculptures sought in nature not only their knowledge of human forms and of the draperies that covered them, but also that of the principles of decoration. It is in the charming profusion of flowers and foliage that the genius of Gothic architecture is most freely displayed. One of the most admirable of its creation is the famous vintage capital in Notre Dame in Trimes. The Gothic cathedral contains scenes from the scriptures and the legends of the saints, motives from the animal and vegetable kingdom, representation of seasons of agricultural labor, of the arts and science and crafts, and finally moral allegories. The first aim of their art is not to place but to teach. They offer a vast reference for those who cannot read translated into sculptures or glass painting in a clear and precise language. Now, keeping this in mind, look at the marvelous sculpture of the meeting between Abraham and Melchizedek in Triumph's Cathedral or the visitation, the seated prophet and the standing angel in the same cathedral or at the Magdalene of Bredek's Cathedral. In this connection, it can be said that Gothic art treated but few scripture episodes choosing those which conveyed some doctrine and tended it to edification, this is to say, to the glorification of the faith. Now, let us not forget the fact that Gothic sculptures was not confined to the decoration of cathedrals. It produced, especially from the 14th century onwards, a number of memorial statues for tombs which gradually become portraits. It was portraiters which led Gothic art from realism to naturalism to the rendering of individual expression. The other works include statues and bas reliefs in wood and ivory which were often painted and gilded. From the beginning of the 14th century, Gothic art began to show signs of exhaustion and become mannered and complex. We must now turn our attention to the Italian painting which at the end of the 13th century produced great works of art as the rise of Gothic cathedrals in France. Medieval Italy, although strongly influenced by northern art from Carolingian times on, had always maintained contact with Byzantine civilization. As a consequence, panel painting, mosaic and murals were kept alive in Italy. Towards 1300, Gothic influence spilled over into the Italian painting and the interaction of this style with the Neo-Byzantine produced a revolutionary new style. The huge altar piece, Madonna Enthroned by Simabiu, is a fine example, but it is in the paintings of Daxio of Siena, a quarter century later, we see a new kind of picture space and a new treatment of narrative as a result of cross-fertilization of Gothic and Byzantine elements. Turning from Daxio to Gaiota, we meet an artist of far bolder and more dramatic temper. The art of Gaiota is so daringly original that its sources are difficult to trace. Of Gaiota's surviving murals, those in the Arena Chapel in Padua, done in 1305 to 1306, are the best preserved as well as most characteristic. The closeness to everyday life in a monumental scale coupled with a keen interest in problems of space can be seen in Lorenzetti Brothers' paintings. Toward the year 1400, the merging of northern and Italian style gave rise to a single dominant style throughout Europe. Though it was not confined to painting, it was painters who played a main role in its development. Among the most important was Melchior Broedalum. The style reached its most advanced phase in the luxurious book of ours known as Le Tre Riches Hairs Du Duck De Bury, produced by Limbong Brothers. Now, it's time to conclude the session. 
As the art of Middle Age is a vast area to study, it is impossible to include all aspects and works of art in this short discussion. I leave it upon you to find out more examples and information regarding this chapter. Thank you.